So, so first of all, uh, let's touch on this uh, FTC uh, decision. H how big a setback is it for the FTC and the government uh, as a whole in their attempts to, to kind of rein in big tech? Well, well, it's obviously a setback. But what's unclear is what happens from here. We have in Congress, at least in the House of Representatives, genuine bipartisan interest in upgrading antitrust laws so that they fit better the economic reality of 2021. And so that, I think, got a big boost from the judge's decision. But how much that's going to affect Facebook remains to be seen. I think the core issue that we have here is that 40 years ago, we decided to invert antitrust law. So previously, it had been focused on preventing concentrated economic power. And beginning in 1981, we imposed something called the Consumer Welfare Standard that said, so long as prices to consumers don't go up, there's no limit to how much economic power can be concentrated or what other things you can do with it. And this case was literally exactly perfect example of why that needs to be redebated. But from Facebook's point of view, I think the stock reacted correctly yesterday. This was not helpful to the government, which let's face it, they haven't done an antitrust case since Microsoft in the 90s, and their muscle tone for regulation has just gotten very flabby. So, so is one of the takeaways that uh, realistically to see anything meaningful, we're going to have to see legislation and all parts and all sides of the government come, come together? And is that likely? Well, so, well, not necessarily. The state of Texas has a, an antitrust case against both Google and Facebook for price fixing that is unaffected by the decision yesterday. That case, should the federal government decide to take it up, which is entirely possible, is the kind of thing that can cause a very radical change because price fixing is the greatest crime you can commit in antitrust, and it is punishable by prison terms for executives. For example, the CEO of Bumblebee Tuna is currently in federal prison. Uh, for price fixing in a case that's about 1% as large as the one that Google and Facebook are accused of. So there are a lot of things that are going to be going on. So from investor point of view, I think the thing we have to look at is something like water torture, where there's going to be a constant drip of regulatory things from Europe, from Australia, from the United States. And I don't think there's any death blow coming. And I think in the United States, at least, regulation is going to take a very long time to come through the process. But I do think regulation is increasing and that from an investor's point of view, uh, Facebook has just bought itself a little breather, but I don't think it's out of the woods. I think Google is still completely in the crosshairs and I think Amazon is as well. That's what I was going to ask, Roger, if this is just a reprieve from Facebook, which it sounds like the government is going to have a harder time making the case for monopoly there, or if if it shows for all of them, you can't just go after them because they're big and because there's political appetite to do so because there are laws and there are precedents and the, and the judges will enforce that. Well, Sarah, to be clear, I don't think that the judge threw this case out in its entirety. He merely said you need to come back and do a better market definition. He actually showed the FTC how to restructure its case. So I don't think the thing is gone. From Facebook's point of view, you know, this wasn't a perfect outcome. It was just way better than they had before. I think the challenge that we face... But it made it, the, Roger, it made it pretty hard going forward. They basically accused them of not being able to define a monopoly or, or even the 60% market share in personal social networking services, which, yeah, which they don't I, do, and there is no real definition. So I think that point, there is no real definition. That is clearly true. But there are clearly things the FTC could have done to better frame its case under the current interpretation of antitrust law. And I do expect them to do that. Whether the case goes anywhere, it's anybody's guess. To me, the really core issue here is that the consumer welfare standard enabled massive growth for a number of years. But now you have a situation where companies are essentially replacing the government in setting the rules for our lives. You know, that the rules of Facebook and Google have far more impact on us than the law does. And at some point, that becomes an issue for democracy. And I just don't know where we're going to go on this, but I think from an investor's point of view, you should expect that none of these things is going to clear the way, that companies will be spending more of their energy, more of their management time, fighting various regulatory things, some of which I think are bound to be successful. And I think right. Google is the most vulnerable right now with Amazon being in second place. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.